to uh, sharpen and encourage men. Um, and I'm so proud of this ministry because y'all are doing it here in Temecula. I, I, that keeps me abreast of what's going on, the outreaches y'all are doing, and then also here every Thursday, just getting the word, um, sharpening one another, and um, the worship. Great job. So um, I, I kind of honor the privilege always to be a part of something where men are sharpening one another for the glory of God. But yes, um, as he, Zach told you, I came from Virginia. Um, uh, to, and I'm glad I'm not in Virginia right now. I've got cold weather that they're dealing with, though. I love uh, California. Uh, but miss the family, though. But um, yeah, I, I want to kind of share this morning what the Lord has laid in my heart, uh, establishing a new ministry called Moving Forward. Um, and I'll tell you more about that as we progress. Uh, Moving Forward is a ministry that is geared toward encouraging individuals along their journey in four particular areas. Their personal walk, their family walk, their church walk, and community development. And um, I think that uh, we uh, always should be moving forward. We should not necessarily be stagnant, looking back, but moving, progressing ahead. And moving forward toward um, not necessarily a destination, because as men, we, we always about destinations, like, you know, wife, plug in the uh, GPS, and let's tell where we're going. But um, uh, moving forward is about um, moving forward toward a person, that's Jesus Christ. Uh, Hebrews 12 uh, tells us that we are to fix our eyes on Jesus. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. So as we're moving forward, also, I, I imagine yourself in, in a car, and generally, as men too, we love to take control of the wheel. But in the spiritual sense, though, moving forward means allowing the Holy Spirit to take the wheel and you to sit back and enjoy the ride. And let me trust you guys, that's hard to do. It's hard to kind of give up the will because you want control, right? But the, if, if you want to be filled with the Spirit, you allow Him to take control of your life and take you toward your destination. Take you toward that person becoming more like Christ because that's what we've been created for, to become more like Jesus. So moving forward um, is a ministry that I have established and I'm looking forward to uh, this impacting people along the journey. And this morning I want to talk about moving forward in our personal development. Because it starts there. It starts with um, looking at ourselves and like, well, Lord, how are you going to, you know, wire and fix me to, that I can lead my wife and lead my kids. I can be a, a great model in the church, use the gift that God's given me, and also I can impact my community. So how do we go about doing that? And I want to share what would... Um, how I kind of established uh, moving forward is found in Philippians chapter 3. And I love Paul. Paul um, was a great missionary, um, a man who wrote 13 letters of the Bible. Uh, he understood about moving forward. Uh, he understood that it was not necessarily about <coughs> a nation, but about a person. And in Philippians chapter 3, I'm going to read verses 10 through 15, and he's talking about the, the goal of life. Um, as he is looking at his life, how do I move forward? What is my goal? And if anybody can help me, um, Philippians, when he's writing this book, where is he? He's in, jail. He's in prison. Yeah. He's in prison, right? He's in jail, shackled to a Roman soldier. And he's like, how can this guy talk about moving forward? Because he had a mindset. He knew who he was. He knew his identity in Christ. And that's very important. Because it's not necessarily about a destination. It's about embracing a person along the way. And in verse 10 of chapter 3, he says, that I may know him, not just know about him, now he want to know him intimately, Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, in order that I may attain the resurrection from the dead, not that I've already obtained it, uh, have already been made perfect, I mean mature, completed my faith, but I press on, I'm moving on so that I may lay hold of what which also lay hold by Jesus Christ. Brothers, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. Forgetting what lies behind. So earlier in this chapter, he's talking about that he was um, a Hebrew of Hebrews. He put no confidence in the flesh. He was circumcised on the eighth day, a nation of Israel, a tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, a law of the Pharisees. He said, but you know what? I forgot those things. Those things are past. He said, but what I'm doing now, 
is that I am reaching forward, moving forward to what lies ahead. Verse 14, now I press on, I'm moving forward toward the goal for the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. He says, I'm in prison, but I'm moving forward. I have a mindset. I know who I am. I'm not caught up in this, a place, but I'm embracing a person. I want to become more like Christ. I'm pressing toward the mark. I'm not looking behind. Now, I don't forget about what's behind, about my past things, but I'm moving forward toward the goal, and the goal is Jesus Christ. He says, if I'm to move forward, I have to begin in my personal development. See, in Galatians 2.20, Paul said that I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, you're not Christ, but you're not Christ, but Christ lives inside of me. And the life I live is in Jesus Christ. So he's saying that I know my identity. I'm not caught, I'm not in a, a holding pattern when it comes to what my personal development should look like. And that's what I want to encourage us this morning about your personal development, becoming more like Christ. Guess what? Our kids need to see us become more like Christ. Our wives are praying that we become more like Jesus. Because men, we are the priests of our home. We are the leaders of our home. In order to move forward, we have to embrace not a destination, but a person. So let's turn to Psalm 128, because this kind of really unpackaged uh, this whole philosophy, philosophy about moving forward and being kingdom minded. Psalm 128, verses 1 to 2. Let me get there. And the background is, is if you imagine a family, is tra they're traveling to Jerusalem, and they're... Um, the, f the husband or the father is talking to his children about what a blessed life looks like. Uh, because and they're going to Jerusalem, the place of worship, a pilgrimage, if you will. And Deuteronomy tells us as fathers that we have to be teaching our children on the way as we're walking down the street, as they're getting up. We are always in the mindset of teaching our children about the things of the Lord and what the blessed life looks like. And in verse 1 of Psalm 128, it says, How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. If you want to have a little blessed life, it begins by fearing the Lord. Giving him reverence and respect. But another way of saying fear God is, do you take him seriously? See, so what's happening today, brothers, we don't take God seriously. We take him seriously on Sunday when we got to go through the motions of going to church and, you know, doing that thing. Or maybe Wednesday night, the Bible study kind of, you know, showing from the guys that, you know, hey, I, I get my Bible, let's discuss it, though, but taking God seriously is a 24-7 kind of deal. Yeah. The fear of the Lord says, God, I take you seriously. You are my affection. You are my hope. I'm focusing my eyes on you. That's the only way I'm going to move forward. Right. He says, how blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. And we all want to be blessed. But see, blessed is not necessarily material possessions. It's nice to have a house. It's nice to have a, a car. It's nice to have, you know, some nice little things. But, you know, that's not a blessed life. Right. It's more than that. Matthew 6.33 says that we are to seek Christ first, his kingdom. Right. And all the other things will be added unto us. But see, we want these material things. But see, guys, Solomon said that those things will pass away. Solomon said, and he cleared that I tried everything. But it's all emptiness. But see, people today are still looking for, you know, that, that, that next, you know, thing that's going to make them happy. And Christ says, to be happy begins by fearing the Lord, taking him seriously. How blessed is everyone who fears the Lord. And it begins with you and I. See, um, I just remember my father growing up, I mean, growing up seeing him. He was a man who feared the Lord. He was a hard worker. He worked at the shipyard for the Navy, woke up early in the morning, got home late at night, but he was a man who feared God. And he got saved late in life, but it impacted my mother. My mom was like, you know, um, the partier, if you could believe that. My mom loved the party and dance and all that. And when my father got saved, she said, you know what? Does that mean that we got to kind of give up some of the things that we always used to do. And my father said, you know, honey, listen, I, I, 
that means that I'm going to, you know, give it up. But, you know, I hope that you're going to follow me. Follow me. And, she, and so what happened was that so she watched my, my father. She observed him. And see, it was the man, he, he, would, he would be praying constantly. He would go to church. She wouldn't go. But she was watching him. Here was a man who took God seriously. And see, it impacted my mother. It impacted my mother. It impacted me. I remember when I got saved at the age of 11. And I said, Dad, what's the next thing I got to do? They said, get into this book. This is the love letter. I said, what should I read? They said, read the book of Proverbs. Read one proverb a day, and you get wisdom. And he was serious about it. I said, one book? I mean, one chapter a day? Yes. And you'll get some wisdom. My father took God seriously. He was a blessed man. And the Bible says how blessed is everyone who takes God seriously. And so we all take, you know, we all um, take the, the police officer seriously. I, I was driving. <laughs> I was driving up here, and I was going kind of, you know, fast, uh, maybe around 70. And uh, as I was driving, uh, I saw a trooper kind of peer off, you know, right onto the interstate as well on 15. So what, I ha what happened was my foot uh, raised off of the accelerator really quickly. Why was that, guy? Because fear overwhelmed me, right? So um, uh, I, I kind of you know, slowed down a little bit, but the heat kind of passed on. He kept, kept driving. So what I did was I went as business as usual, started driving again. And so the issue is that we are to take things seriously to the, the uh, police officer is the authority, right? But see, what happens is when he was, when he was next to me, I was like, you know, focused. I was doing what I was supposed to do. But then when he left, I went as business as usual. And that's what we do with God. That's what we do with God. We don't take him seriously. Only on Sunday and on Wednesday. But also, we take things seriously as far as, the, you know, an outlet. We don't, none of us are going to take, take our fork and put the fork into the outlet. Why? Because we know it's going to be a consequence, right? right. We fear that. So we got to fear God. We got to take him seriously 24-7. How we do that? It says, how do we fear the Lord? It says, those who walk in his ways. We walk in his ways. But what happens is, like Proverbs 14, 12 says, there's a way that seems right to a man. But that way is what? Destruction. So we won't follow our own way. But said, no, we got to walk in God's ways. When we fear the Lord, we walk in his ways. Right here, his ways. Walking is you're in step, you're moving forward to what God has commanded you to do according to the word. You walk in his ways. Let's turn to Psalm 1, chapter 1, verse 1 through 2, real quickly. This is how you walk in his ways. It says, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of the sinners nor sit in the seat of the scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law, he meditates day and night. So the man is blessed who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. And this guy is progressing from walking to standing to sitting. He's standing in the path of sinners. He's uh, sitting near the scoffer. But he says, no, you, you don't do that. You keep walking. You keep moving forward because... A man who fears the Lord, he delights in the law of the Lord, his ways. So, again, it's not about walking in his ways. It's not about just, you know, on Sunday, just, you know, getting into the word. But that's, you know, you hear the pastor preach the sermon, you go home, you meditate on it, and you say, okay, all right. You share at the table with the family, and you say, okay, how can we put this into practice? And so we got to delight in the word. It should not be a, a, a chore or a task. This is God's love letter to us. But it only happens as we fear the Lord, we take him seriously, and we walk in his ways. It's a continual deal. It's moving forward, taking God seriously. I, I like it. Delighting in the law of the Lord. And you meditate. That means focused thought, focused attention. I believe, too, honestly, for us to move forward, we really have to know, man, personally, who we are in Christ. If we knew who we were in Christ, man, we could walk victoriously every day. But we question it. We allow the evil one to get into our mind and 
and cause us to put doubt in our heart and to kind of question who we are. Because we base our ability on, you know, necessarily what the world says. We can't follow what the world says. We got to see what the good book says. Um, do this, do this um, for me. Go to Ephesians, or when you get home, Ephesians chapter 1, and just read how blessed you are. Ephesians chapter 1, read through that chapter. I'm going to tell you, by the end of that chapter, you're going to be smiling. It tells you how blessed you are. You've been chosen. You've been selected, predestined before the foundation of the world. We have to recognize, man, who we are in Christ. And we, we know that. We can walk in victory. We can move forward toward what God has called us to do. Not a destination, but a person embracing Jesus Christ. That God, you know what? I I'm walking with you. You know, it's been a rough day, but I'm going to still keep my eyes fixed on you. Delighting in the law of the Lord. So, the fear of God, back to um, 128 says, you walk in his ways. But then a couple of things happen when you take, you fear God, you walk in his ways. Verse 2 says, when you shall eat of the fruit of your hands, you will be happy and it will be well with you. So that affects your, your fortune your future, and your feelings. When you shall eat of the fruit of your hands. If you are fearing God, you live in a blessed life, God's going to impact your fortune. He's going to impact it. But also, he's going to impact, he says, you will be happy at your feelings. Again, happiness is knowing who you are in Christ. Happiness is not stuff. Jesus talked about that in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5. He says, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, meaning the, blessed are those who recognize that they are spiritually bankrupt. They won't bring anything to the table. It's only by God's grace that I'm saved. Yeah, that's right. And you are happy because you recognize that. It says, and it will be well with you. Also, it affects your future. So it affects your fortune, your feelings, and your future. But see, what we have to give God... We gotta give God three things when it comes to living the blessed life. We gotta give Him our time. We gotta give Him our talent. We gotta give Him our treasures. We gotta give Him our time. You see, you have to say, okay, there's 24 hours in a day. Say, Lord, I give you my time. I give that to you consistently. I gotta give you my treasures. Um, a brother um, actually uh, blessed me um, with something. And it was, it, was, it was a monetary gift. And he said, you know what, listen, man, I, the Lord has blessed me so much. And he said, I don't hold too tightly to money because money belongs to God. And I know if I give this to you, God's going to bless me. So you know what? That's a blessed man. <laughs> because he did not hold on to anything. He knows that God's treasures, uh, it all belongs to God. And if God blessed me to give, I'm going to give back. So we have to be, I mean, we, we got to understand about that God wants to get, take our treasures and use them for his kingdom. But also, so our time, our treasures, and our talents. Everybody in this room has a talent, an ability, a gift. And God wants you to use that talent and that ability for the glory of God. Right. See, in your church, right there, whatever, find somewhere you to use your gift. Whether it's greeting, ushering, whether it's just, you know, uh, uh, putting the tables up or chairs, find your gift right. and use it. For the glory of God, no gift should not be no gift should be wasted. God says, you know, you're to use that gift for His glory. And see, that's a blessed life. Will you recognize that I use my time, my talent, and my treasures for His glory? So that's what I want to leave with you guys again about moving forward in your personal walk. It takes understanding the fear of the Lord, taking Him seriously, walking in His ways. Understanding that your time, your talents, and treasures belong to him. And recognize that moving forward is not necessarily a destination, more importantly, walking with a person toward that destination. <clears throat> Fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. I just pray this morning that you just recognize that how important that you are in the body of Christ. Yes, how important you are to your wives and to your children. They're looking for us as we move forward. Joshua said it clearly. He says, you know what? Choose this day whom you're going to serve. Whether you're going to serve the God of the Amorites, choose this day. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Let me pray for you guys. Father, I thank you again for the opportunity to be with these brothers. And I just pray, Lord, that they will just embrace 
what I have shared about moving forward. So I pray, Lord, that we will every day take you seriously, Father God. That we will walk in your ways. And that we will invest, in, invest, Lord, in the future. And also utilize our time, our talent, and our treasure for your glory. We love you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, brothers. God bless. Amen.